in the middle of looking at Michigan, it's going to be a big challenge. Um, I know some look at their record and it's still Michigan football team. They're very, very talented. They run very extremely well. They've had some injuries, which, uh, to very key players. I don't know what their status will be uh, for this Saturday, but uh, they're a very talented football team. So we certainly have a huge challenge ahead of us, one that we're excited about. Uh, we're excited to be playing at home again and um, got to have a great week of preparation. I'll open it up for questions. First question from Tom Canavan, Associated Press. Greg, how you doing? Doing well, Tom. How are you? Good. When your quarterback has three interceptions, after the game, do you sit down and talk, talk to him about, I, I want you to be aggressive, but we have to value the rock? Yeah, Tom, that's a good question. I always talk like that to him. Um, as I said Saturday after the game, I really believe it's, it's managing risk and managing opportunity. And it's not always easy to see which is which. And that's, that's how quarterbacks progress. Um, you have to let the bad ones die. And that's the single biggest thing. And even though Noah's an older guy, he doesn't have a ton of experience under his belt. So uh, hopefully with experience, he'll better recognize the ones that are the ones that we got to let die. Um, because there's going to be plenty of opportunities in a game. As, as I talk to all the time about the team, football games usually come down to anywhere between, you know, six to 10 plays. Now, if I could predict the 10, six to 10 plays that we're going to be, I could tell them, hey, these are the ones you really, you really got to go hard on and really pay extra attention, but I can't. So that's why you got to play every one of them hard and you got you to focus and you got to prepare for everyone. And that's the challenge, I think, is, is getting, getting Noah to, to better see that, understand that, anticipate that. On the same token, he made, he made several plays that were really big time plays, so um, again, we're managing the opportunity. We have to do just a little better job managing the risk. Next question is from James Cratch, NJ.com. Greg, I guess to piggyback off what Tom asked, uh, are you sticking with Noah this week? And also, is Brendan White going to be a long-term injury, or should he be back this week? Well, I will start with the quarterback question. Yes, Noah's, Noah's our, our starting quarterback. And I think I probably need to, from our standpoint at least, kind of settle things down a little bit. Um, we're clearly in the developmental stage of offense, defense, and special teams, right? Uh, with everything that's gone on this year, without a training camp, without spring ball, we can't get the cart before the horse. But if you look at even in this developmental stage, offensively, we're performing better than any time in the history of Big Ten football for Rutgers. Um, so... I just, you know, my job as a coach, I got to step back and look and say, okay, where are we? Each week I have to do that because I've always believed this, but I've learned it more in the back half of my career. You know, to know where you're going, you better know where you've been and where you are right now. And that's what I keep trying to, to just look at it. Where are we? You know, we got better on the offensive line this week. Was it what we're looking for? Absolutely not, not even close. But if we can continue to make that incremental improvement, the thing that excites me is even while we're making incremental improvement, again, we're operating at a higher level than we ever have in the Big Ten. That's substantial to me. So I have to look at that. I have to take that into account as I make decisions personnel-wise, as I talk to our staff about what do we think we need to do schematically. Um, those all come into play. But to answer your question, Noah will, will be the starter. Brendan White, that was uh, disappointing. Last week, he, had hurt, he injured it initially in the Ohio State game, and that, but he was able to practice, and then he kind of awkwardly fell, and he injured it again, and, and this time more substantially. I don't know if he'll be able to play this week. Uh, we're going to have to see how it progresses. But, uh, you know, Larry Steven, Lawrence Stephen jumped in and did a really good job Saturday, but, you know, Brendan White was the starter for a reason. He's an experienced big guy that uh, probably would have helped a little bit in that run game scenario, but... It is what it is. You know, you got to move forward. And like I said, I think Lawrence did a good job filling in, um, especially for his first real time in our defense. I don't even know if he had played much before on, at safety, but in our defense, uh, playing a substantial number of plays. Next question from Bobby Darren, 
Greg, I know you talked about the offensive line just now. Can you talk about the decision to start Felter? I know it's not real typical for you to start true freshman on the O-line. Yeah, I don't think anything's typical about 2020. So, like, <laughs> we could take that and throw it out the window. Um, Felter, I felt, gave us the best chance to win. And that's always going to be the decision, whether it's 2020 or as long as, as, as I'm coach here. You know, I think you have to look at every week differently because every week is its own season. And I believe that. And uh, health changes, weather changes, the team you're playing changes. There's so many things that change. And you got to look at it. Okay, how are we going to win this week's game? Let's not worry about next week or last week. How are we going to win this week's game? And um, I really felt like Felter gave us the best chance. So, again, we'll see how it, how it plays out this week. But uh, that's how I felt going into the game on Friday. We'll go to Chris Eisman with we'll Gannett. Brad, you said uh, earlier that you know you're still sort of evaluating things and kind of trying to figure things out. What can you kind of learn about certain guys and, and really the team overall with the way that they respond to the game that you just had, whether it's this week in practice and then on Saturday night against Michigan? Well, I think I, I think I have a pretty good feel for our team right now. I don't want to make it sound like like I think after two games I kind of thought I knew what we had, and after four games I got a pretty good feel. But I think you're right, Chris, and your question is how are they going to respond to this? This is different. Again, I, I said we're running out of first. Well, we got another first, right? You know, Illinois left this building and they won the game, so they don't feel like they stole one. But when I watched the video, I said, look, we we did our part there, so enough. I don't want to talk about it anymore. How are we going to move forward? How are we going to progress? Because this is another first, right? Severe disappointment in one that got away. Now, how are we going to progress? Are we going to come out and fight our you-know-what's off? Or are we going to let Illinois beat us twice? Because you know what? I've had teams, and I've been a coach, that has let one team beat us twice. We can't let that happen. We won't let that happen. Uh, we're going to go out and play the best game we have all year against Michigan, and we're going to need to uh, to have an opportunity to, to compete. Next question is from Steve Politti, NJ.com. Hey, Greg, you've, you've obviously made quarterback changes in the, in the in season before. Just curious how you measure – that win the next game approach versus the big picture thing you were talking about before about what the offense is doing and, and from a game to game standpoint, when, when you do make that kind of decision about the starting quarterback. Well, first off, I, I talk to the guys that coach the quarterback every day, right? I coach the whole team. Sean Gleason coaches uh, Noah and all the quarterbacks every single day and the offensive staff, they study our offensive practice film every day. So that's where I gather most of my uh, information. But at the end of the day, that's the decision of the head coach with a lot of input from a lot of people. Um, but that's really at every position. Obviously, quarterback gets the most attention, but that's every position in all three phases. You know, I, I, I spend a lot of time worrying who the L4 is on kickoff coverage. And, you know, some people don't know who the L4 is. But to me, it's very important that we have the right person in each job. Um, again, quarterback is the most important. So how do you balance it? Well, I think you got to make sure you understand what you're evaluating. Like, okay, what, what did we just evaluate? When a guy gets hit when he's throwing the ball, is that partly his fault? Maybe if he held it too long. So let's get a time off the video. Okay, we released it in 2.3 seconds. He shouldn't get hit in 2.3 seconds. We released it in 3.8 seconds. Well, you better have that clock in your head and get rid of the ball. So we really spent a lot of time on Sunday evaluating the previous game. And truth be told, it's Saturday night, it's Sunday morning, it's Sunday afternoon, right? I mean, the older I get, I used to be able to, I don't know what's wrong, I used to be able to go enjoy the night and then get on it the next morning. Now I have to do it then. Um, I'm probably just getting more boring, don't have much going on, I don't know. But um, it haunts you. And then, it, you know, it haunts you when you lose a game like that. It haunts you when you win. Right? Oh man, we could have done this. We could. Oh, how are we going to make sure in the next game that won't be good enough? So, um, that's one of the blessings and curses of of my profession. But that's what we do. We try to take all the information, gather it, me talk to the experts, and then come up with a conclusion. Um, but this one didn't take didn't take much time. I know that it's not what we wanted the result, but um, that's our decision as a team, as a, as, a, as a staff, and at the end of the day, as a head coach. We're going to go to Bruce Beck, NBC. 
Greg, if you are indeed in the developmental stage in year one, how valuable is it just to get these reps in a season that almost didn't happen? How much of a bonus is it going into to game five? Well, the reps are important, but I don't look at it as a bonus because if you play, if you have a scoreboard and you keep scoring, then they count and they count. And there is a 2020 season. Now, there wasn't for a while, right? But now there is. And as long as they're keeping score, it counts. So I don't ever want to ever, ever sound that way because I don't believe that at all. That, you know, oh, this is kind of a, you know, a, a free pass or whatever people call this 2020 season. It isn't to me, you know. And um, again, each game is a one game. Each game is a one game season. And that's literal to me. And, you know, the amount of time that we put into just one game um, is a huge commitment. Players, coaches, staff. So, um, again, I told you guys, when you lose a game, you mourn it. This one, there was some, some serious mourning, but it's time to pull up your bootstraps and get to work. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to figure out a way to put together a plan uh, to, go, to go win Saturday night. Our next question is from Richie Schneider with Rivals. Coach, you obviously went over the game film. Um, Isaiah Williams did a great job running against you guys. I know you guys ran a QB spy on him for a little bit. What, what was the biggest uh, reason for the breakdown there and the QB spy not being effective? Uh, you know, like I said, that one, we got to move on, Richie. Uh, we didn't do a good job. There's a lot of reasons we didn't, we didn't get the job done. That's one of them. But, I mean, you could name a bunch more. Um, I'm looking forward to Michigan. Now, the fact that they have a quarterback that you're going to need to spy on as well, then that's a good question. You know, how are you going to be able, if that was a problem last week, how are you going to be able to fix that problem this week? Because if number five's in there, he can really cause damage with his feet. Um, we have to figure that out. What we did wasn't effective. Whether it's scheme, personnel, whatever, you know, those are decisions we have to come up with. But when you have a mobile quarterback, you need to make sure that in passing situations, that if you shut down the pass game in the back end, that he can't tuck the ball, run and scramble and get the first down. That That is a killer, right? As you do your job in the back seven and the guy gets out, or you do your job in the back six or five, depending on the scheme you're playing, and the guy gets out. And uh, Michigan is very capable of that. So we have to figure that out in a hurry. Well, here, Patrick Melmoranen from the Press of Atlantic City. Hey, Coach, how are you? Doing well, Patrick. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, just want to ask, what is going to be your message for your team this week as you prepare for Michigan? You know, what are going to be telling your players to focus them and get get them ready during practice week to prepare them for this game? Well, every week we give them a plan to win, and we give that to them early in the week. And so the the, the fundamentals of our program never change. Uh, offense, defense, special teams, they don't, you know, th those are things that we spend a lot of time in the off season every year tweaking and making sure this, this is how we play the game of football. But then, as I said, each game is a one game season. So we evaluate our opponent and we come up with some things that are key to victory in all three phases. And then we present them to the team. And then we, we really make that the emphasis in our preparation for the week. Um, so that's how we approach it every week. Now, effort, focus right in your preparation those are the key regardless of what the key factors are to, for victory you better be locked in you better have that focus you better be willing to give effort otherwise you know all the greatest ideas and greatest summations mean nothing so at the end of the day it still comes down to the player's focus and willingness to work hard to get ready to to, to execute the plan thank you thank you we'll go to aaron brightman on the banks Hey, Coach, just wanted to ask about special teams play in terms of coverage, uh, coverages and in terms of how you felt they performed to this point and, and then kind of the necessity for needing to produce bigger plays maybe to, to help compensate for, you know, the development of other units. Well, I thought our coverage was very good, actually, Saturday. It was zero return yards in the punt game, which anytime you can do that, you've, you've actually eliminated one phase of special teams, right? So great job by the gunners and great job by our punter uh, and, and great job by the protection. And our kickoff coverage, I think they averaged something like 13 and a half yards a return. So if you can do that, if you can drive the ball down there, you know, 
even inside the 10, right? It's still a 23. It's still better than a touchback. So both both our coverage units, I thought, did a, did a good job. As far as overcoming or making something happen uh, with our return game in, you know, to offset, I don't, I don't think that's necessary. I think what we need to do is just do a good job in all our all four of our core special teams. And then PAT field goal and PAT field goal block are, own, are always their own entity. And I think PAT field goal and PAT field goal block are different um, because that the expectation on those plays is to score points. So if you don't score points, you've done something poorly. And if you can, on the other side, block one or force them to miss it, now you've really made hay because the expectation is that they're going to score points. So um, I really, as you know, I'm very uh, involved with special teams. I think special teams are a critical portion of winning games. It's not a third and a third. People always make that mistake. It's a third of the game. No, it's about 22% of the game special teams are. But the difference is in special teams, the amount of real estate that gets traded, right? That's the big difference. You have guys that are running down a whole football field to basically get into a formation and run a play on kickoff and kickoff return, right? And then on punt, punts an organized turnover. It's the only play in football where you know at the beginning of the play you're going to start on offense and you're going to end on defense. So it takes special guys to be able to play on that that unit. Um, and then you guys know we love to, uh, to, to come after the punter. We love to do return schemes. So, um, yeah, we, we think that they're all important. We put a high premium on special teams. We spend a lot of time on it. Plus, when we don't perform well in special teams, it's very frustrating because we take time allotment and give to special teams. So when it doesn't work, uh, you sit there and say, well, maybe we should not use that time that way. You can't second guess. You, gotta, you, have, your, you have your philosophy and you got to go with it. A question is with James Crash. Greg, I think we're at the midpoint now. Uh, road teams are a couple games over 500. I guess, do you think there's something to that or just a fluke? And I'm just curious, is it easier as a home team in terms of the whole 2020 you know, testing and all that stuff as opposed to being on the road? Do you think that's the home field advantage that you're in your comfort zone when you go through everything you have to do to play a game? That's a, that's a great question, Cratch. And I, and I think there's so many parts to it. Like you said, there's the testing part. Testing has been so standardized by the Big Ten that I don't think there really is a difference home or away. You know, you just got to decide when you're going to do it in your prep, in your preparation pregame. Um, no doubt it's more comfortable when you're home. Everything's more comfortable. The hotel, coming here, not having to travel, um, that's all better, in my opinion. That's part of the home field advantage. I think there's a loss without the fans – there's definitely a loss. I know we miss our fans a great deal. Would I have loved to have our fans up 20 to 10? Yeah, it would. I think it would have meant a lot. But you know what? Ohio State would have liked to have their fans up 35 to 3, too. I think Ryan even mentioned it. You know, the team came out of the tunnel, and there's no fans, and it's Saturday night. And, you know, there's truth to what he said. So I think, without a doubt, the lack of fans, you can do what you want with all the artificial noise, but that human element and that energy that the team's get off their their home field advantage i think is real uh, and if if and the oppression you can sometimes feel like i've been in environments where it's so loud that you go up to somebody and you talk in their, in their ear and they can't hear you right i mean that's well that changes the game a little bit and um yeah this is the year that we don't get any of that we get uh it's funny one uh, somebody told me they're not real into football and they come to games they say like Sometimes the crowd noise doesn't match up with the play and it affects how they understand the game because, you know, when the crowd reacts, you know, oh, I better look, something's happening. Um, sometimes the crowd noise is a little delayed or it's a little, sometimes inappropriate, right? Like guys cheering and it really wasn't that great a play to cheer so loud, you know, but I think when you're, uh, it's definitely weird, but what isn't weird about 2020? But um, that's what adds, you know, if you can find a way to better navigate through it, I think you, you can find a competitive advantage, and that's what we're trying to do. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a great week.